Hello, in this video, we're going to look at bundle pricing strategy. Here we have a table showing the consumer valuations per year for lawn cutting and fertilizer. Selma, at most, is willing to pay $700 for lawn cutting and $300 for fertilizer. Together, she's willing to pay $1,000 for both of those services. Hank, on the other hand, is willing to pay $1,000 for lawn cutting at most and $250 at most for fertilizer. The bundle then is going to be valued here at $1,250 for Hank. The marginal cost of lawn cutting is $300 and the marginal cost of fertilizer is $100. If the company prices its services separately, how much producer surplus does it earn? Keep in mind here, a consumer will not buy the service if the price exceeds the consumer's valuation. Selma will not pay more than $700 for lawn cutting. Hank will not pay more than $1,000 for lawn cutting, for example. In this case, the price of lawn cutting should be set by $700. At $700, Selma will buy lawn cutting and Hank will buy lawn cutting. In that case, the revenue from lawn cutting is going to be 700 times 2, or $1,400. The two here is that two consumers are buying the lawn cutting at $700 each. Notice if the company set a price of say $1,000, the revenue would be less from lawn cutting. At a price of $1,000, only Hank would buy lawn cutting. Selma's not gonna pay $1,000 for something she values at most at 700. So revenue would be lower at a price of 1,000. In terms of producer surplus from lawn cutting, we have $1,400, the revenue, and we're gonna subtract out the marginal cost from lawn cutting, which is gonna be two times 300. We're cutting two people's lawns here, so the marginal cost per lawn for the season is 300, so two times 300 is 600. Now let's look at the other good. The ideal price for the other good here, if we're pricing separately, is $250 for fertilizer. The revenue from fertilizer then will be $500. Selma and Hank are willing to pay $250 each for fertilizer. If the company tried to charge a price, say $300, only Selma would buy fertilizer and revenue would be less. It would only be $300 instead of $500. The producer surplus from fertilizer is going to be the revenue from the fertilizer minus the marginal cost of applying the fertilizer. And since we have to consumers here, it's going to be 2 times 100. So we're going to subtract out the marginal cost here of $200 from treating both of these consumers' lawns, and we get producer surplus of $300. Taken together then, total producer surplus is going to be the $800 from lawn cutting plus the $300 from fertilizer or $1,100. Now let's look at the bundle pricing strategy. Same marginal cost. If the company prices its services together as a bundle, how much producer surplus does it earn? A consumer will not buy the bundle if the bundle price exceeds the consumer's bundle valuation. The optimal bundle price here is going to be $1,000. At $1,000, Selma will buy the bundle and Hank will buy the bundle. Hank is willing to pay $1,250, so $1,000 gives him a little bit of a deal, or consumer surplus in other words. So at a bundle price of $1,250, only Hank would buy the bundle and the revenue would be less. By charging a price of $1,000 for the bundle, the revenue here is going to total $2,000, 1,000 times 2. Producer surplus here is going to be the $2,000, the revenue from selling uh, a bundle to Selma and Hank. And then we're going to subtract out the marginal cost. So 2 times 300 is where this minus 600 is coming from, and then 2 times 100 is where that minus 200 is coming from. So producer surplus is $1,200, and you'll notice here the producer surplus under the bundle pricing strategy exceeded the producer surplus under a strategy of pricing each service separately. Okay, that's it.